You're listening to the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1 The Edge. Some of the material on the Dean Blundell Show is not suited for all audiences. Listener discretion is strongly advised. There's a time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. The Dean Blundell Show, 102.1. This is your Edge Files with Dean Blundell. On the edge. Ah, oh, is the Canadian Open of badminton just happened? Did you guys know this? Oh man, I had my the Las Canadian Vegas badminton <laughs> Open just took Betting. place, I believe, in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Missed that. Well, um, the Thailand versus Thailand men's double badminton final: <laughs> Odin Isara and Mani Pung. <laughs> <laughs> Jung Geet, former team partners, get in a fight. Now, I read the story. I don't know if you know the backstory here, but one of these two, I don't know which one, because they all, you know, they, yeah. they're, they're both, free. who knows? I've never heard of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of these two guys, he's, he's like, oh, I got to quit because um, my mother's sick. I need to go take care of my mother. And uh, they were like Olympic athletes. Yeah. And so the other guy's like, no problem. And then two weeks later, he surfaces again. Yeah, hey, my mom's fine. I got a new partner. Suck it. Oh, so wow. the, uh, so very underhanded. They, he gets very. a different partner. Them with their new respective partners go to the Canadian Open <laughs> of badminton. <laughs> where the Canadians, Ladies and gentlemen. It couldn't be emptier in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. This is the final, too, and they're like, there's no one watching. It's just their parents. If you ever wondered. And so anyway, the one guy attacks the other guy for, for screwing him over oh. during the match. Like so. Anyway, the fight start. This is what a badminton fight sounds like. You ready? Yeah. Ready. What you're hearing oh. are the cries of all four people watching this. <laughs> Putting the boots to him, kicking him. Oh yeah, this is good. Blood. Yep. <laughs> listen to listen to how intense that was. It's I don't know, they get to have like movie lines like you yeah, watch the birdie, bitch. <laughs> Backhand, forehand. Take that. Listen to how this is. This sounds like it. It was horrific. Listen carefully. Oh. <laughs> There's literally nothing going on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of soft hands hitting yes, each other. Yes, yes. <laughs> that guy got slapped the F out. <laughs> With a birdie. Yeah. And we have a royal baby. Yeah, just some royal yeah, baby music. Yeah, yeah. It is a royal baby Brenda music. Baby. This is a... Uh, uh, all day I was watching the CNN and all day they were reporting on this baby that wasn't born yet. Mm. It was a kid. Mm. There's a baby coming. We're here in front of Buckingham Palace again. We've been here for four days straight. We know she's in labor. However, I would rather stick both hands in my own mouth and clap <laughs> than be here right now. <laughs> Every t- you, If you watched uh, CNN, it was yeah. the same thing where they said nothing. Yeah. If you watched um, MSNBC, it was the same thing. It was just all... Now we go to England. We're, we're going to talk to this very bold reporter again. But no one, everybody made it sound like it was really exciting, except this guy. <laughs> From the BBC? Yeah. Everybody in England was... <laughs> they said most of England doesn't give a rat's ass. Most of the people lined up at Buckingham Palace are from other countries. Yeah. And most of the news outlets are from other countries. The, the British news outlets are outnumbered like a hundred to one yep. by people because no one cares there. Yeah. How much do, don't they have a listen to this reporter? This is the best. Listen. <laughs> yeah, do let me know if you hear anything. Uh, Jane, thank you very much. Jane Hill at Buckingham Palace. Not everybody is in enjoying the specter of the speculation, the endless speculation. A couple of texts coming in to the BBC. Uh, come on, BBC. People do have babies. Stop saying the same thing over and over. Give us the rest of the news. Uh, what a load of sycophantic rubbish, says another. Good morning. And uh, God help us if this ends up a long labor. 
that, that's a view that I have heard expressed here by a couple of people. So, you know, we'll just wait and see. Uh, it could be tomorrow morning, if all goes well today, and uh, there are no complications, that we see the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and their new boy or girl, third in line throne, walking out of that door behind me here at the Lindo Wing. But until then, we're going to be speculating about this royal birth with no facts to hand at the moment. <laughs> Back to you, Ben. <laughs> He's over. <laughs> <laughs> How boring was oh, that? Very. The, you know, the deal he made out of it, that kid uh, might as well be the second coming of Jesus Christ. Could be. But yeah, what a sweet life that kid will have, eh? Oh, yeah. Totally. Imagine being born. That was probably the hardest work he'll ever do. Coming out? Just coming, coming out. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've had quite enough! <laughs> Those are your uh, edge files, whatever the hell day it is, in uh, July the 2013, actually. The Edge Files! On 102.1! The Edge! The Edge! The Edge! Mm. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. We've had a baby. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince William and Kate, welcomed their first child into the world yesterday. A baby boy born at 424. Future stud. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know it. And um, it was it was almost embarrassing the kind of coverage that this got. I, and, and and someone said it before. It's just well, it's just a baby. But when you're born into royalty, I guess it's a pretty big deal. Man, I, I'm British. Mm -hmm. I was born in England, and I have I have less interest in this <laughs> than I do in making sure my toenails are coiffed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, here's the deal. In case you care more than I do, the baby boy, the baby, baby, was born at four twenty four uh, yesterday, weighing uh, eight pounds six ounces. That's a pretty big kid, That's right? A, yeah. That's average, size. average normal. size. From it's normal. The size of that very small woman, yeah, though, that's, true. that's, yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. True. <clears throat> was it born C-section? You know? No, I think it was. I think it was a uh, normal, natural. normal birth, natural birth. Uh, the royal couple remained in the private Lindo wing of St Mary's Hospital, London, overnight. Uh, they're coming out today, sometime. Yes. And going home. Mm -hmm. They will likely appear holding their son on the same steps where Diana, Princess of Wales, and Prince Char Charles Charge, what is it? <laughs> Prince Charge gave the world uh, their Chucky first George. sight of Prince William 31 years ago. I remember that, to mm. be honest with you. Do you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, my mom and dad were up watching it with my grandma at the time. I think. <laughs> 31 years. Ago. I know. Wow. Here's where things get gross. Uh, <laughs> oh no. The Queen's gynecologist. <laughs> oh, squishy. Oh, 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 oh. That's his nickname. Squishy. squishy. <laughs> <laughs> Be awesome if his name was like Dr. Fur if he's German or something. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Furberger. Dr. Furberger. Dr. Furberger. <laughs> <An emergency. laughs> it's time to go splunking. <laughs> splunking? Come on, man. Cave diving. Uh, I know what you said. I know what it is. That's why I said, come on, man. <laughs> the Queen's gynecologist, Dr. Furberger, yes. <laughs> was at the hospital carrying out medical assessments of Catherine following the birth. It is Catherine, by the way. It's not Kate. Oh. Kensington Palace said mm. Tuesday the palace expects to announce more details in the morning. They had the multi-gun salutes yesterday. Then they, they, you know what's funny because the, the kid was born, and there's this, this dork in a in a red red cape outside with all these patches on. He looked like the <laughs> ultimate Boy Scout, <laughs> ringing this bell like he was going to the electric chair. And I thought, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Dead man walking. <laughs> he got it. Here's what happens today. Multi-gun salutes will be held Tuesday afternoon to mark the birth of the new royal heir, third in line to the throne. Don't expect it any time soon, no, no. because the greedy lady's been on the throne for 60 years. Yes, she's got a life wish. She'll never die. The King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery in Green Park will release 41 rounds, Jeez. while the Honorable Artillery Company at the Tower of London will sound 62 rounds. It's a rough day to be a pigeon in London. <laughs> 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 the bells of Westminster Abbey, where William and Kate were married a little over two years ago, will mm. also peal for over three hours. Oh, Jesus. Wow. 
Three <laughs> Three hours. hours of bell ringing. That's a nightmare. It's not known where William and Catherine will take the baby <laughs> after they discharge. <laughs> That's a funny word. Discharge. discharge. <laughs> it's all about the discharge. She did discharge that yeah, baby. Yeah, no kidding. Whew. It may be hard to escape, though. News of the birth announced four hours after the event prompted cheers and celebrations among the well wishes. <laughs> no name yet. Yeah, no. But they're th- they're thinking it's going to be either um, <clears throat> Skyler, no, oh, okay. James, <laughs> Harry, Harry yeah. again, another Harry. Yeah, James, Harry, something king kingish. King like you know Charles. what I mean? Yeah, something like that. No Bubba. Uh, no. No. But Ricky Gervais said something yesterday on Twitter. I was yeah. killing me. Did you read that tweet? No, that he had? no, no. He said he thinks they should name it Adolf just to really screw up. <laughs> No. Just, just to really screw up all the people that put bets on names like James and Alexander. There's a huge betting culture over there, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, anyway, there you go. Well done. You've got a baby. Oh, good day. The world can go on. Um, many bets are being placed as the wait continues on the baby's name. British bookmakers called Ladbrokes. Have James as the favorite, followed by Henry, George, Philip, Alexander, and Richard. Once again, I gotta side with Ricky Gervais on this. Yeah, one. Adolf. <laughs> you do Adolf, man. Those everyone oh. loses all kinds of money. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Except that one guy in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah one. Adolf. It's like the Powerball. <laughs> this is the Dean Lundell Show on one hundred two point one The Edge. Why we just been getting hate effed by Mother Nature? <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, she's not very nice, dude. Uh, no. She's a bit of a whore. Yeah, she is. <laughs> uh, time for your email and tweets. This is from Kevin Dean. You've played clips from the show Strange Addiction, spoken about the state of television. For example, the Kardashian shows. Have you seen my teenage daughter is pregnant, and so am I. Also, uh, what the hell is happening to television? Don't blame it on Facebook. And who the bleep did I marry? That's Any the name of, of a show that yeah, who Facebook the bleep one. Did I marry yeah. Oh. oh, have you seen that one? Who the bleep did I marry? Uh, yeah, I saw one episode. What was it for me? What was on, what was on it? What was the deal? Basically, it was the, the person. You, one, the one say, episode I watched. If you say, uh, "Oh, some per- somebody that couldn't believe they were married to such a crazy person," <laughs> the title I, says I will, it all. I will say you, you are a liar <laughs> and you've never seen it. No. The person turned out to be a serial killer. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Who the bleep did I marry? It's always something with crime involved. <laughs> so they didn't know she was married to this guy for like 20 years. Are you serious? And he was killing people all in Seattle. They had a family and everything, and they found bodies in their backyard. No way. Yeah. Why are the they flowers the growing yeah. so well? Yeah. What's that stench? Yeah. So that's, see, you can understand <laughs> if you get to the point in your marriage where, you know, someone goes a little bit nuts and uh, has like a breakdown and stuff. Yeah. And go, Who the F did I marry? But uh, serial killer. Now, that's a good <laughs> yeah. one. That's pretty yeah. Yeah. I had no idea there's bodies in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> 24 people, huh? Yeah. Wow. 24, yeah. yeah. I guess that Russell Williams wife would probably say the same thing right now, yes. too. Oh, yeah. Who the yeah. F did I marry? I and you'd have no clue. Know. No. At some level, I think you got to know. And just they not, can't hide and that just for pretend, twenty years, and just not look, like yeah, just, just not, don't care. Yeah. yeah, you knew I was a serial killer when you married me. Hundred <laughs> percent. You would be hard to imagine. Mm-hmm. The mind strange addiction one though is still all, oh, one of my all time favorites. And uh, Derek, you had to edit this for us because I just wasn't comfortable. Yeah, with the guy I get saying it. what he I was eating. <laughs> Listen to this. And I'm addicted to eating. Hey, hang on. <laughs> mm. Here is the right one. My name is Howard, and I'm addicted to eating. F- <laughs> Just so you know, the rock yeah. and roll music in the background really sets it off. <laughs> yeah, he's he's talking about his own. Um, he's talking about Excrem- number two. Mm. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. We had to bleep that out. <laughs> I've been eating. F- out about the past two and a half years or so. I'll wake up, excrete my brush my teeth with it, and then if I have enough, I'll make some breakfast with leftovers. It tastes so good, and the texture is to die for. Yeah, I will eventually. No, no it's not. <laughs> no. Yeah, let's normalize this. <laughs> the texture. It. You know, the thing of it is, too, is that it, it, 
Do you remember the chick that put pee in her eye? Yes, I do remember that. From that one? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Sure do. Do you remember that? Mm. Yeah. I clearly wouldn't be able to see better. I tried it. Everything would just say, hey, tried it. <laughs> Doesn't work at all. Oh, like just from the tap just where you sort just of look right down? <laughs> yeah, and just, whoop, just got pee in. Pointed her north. It, it seems, you know, and, and this is the thing about it, too, is it, it, I, you never like to say someone's super screwed up, but this person, whoever that is, is a giant doofus. That's screwed up. <laughs> he couldn't resist the texture. That's what he said. Yeah. Mm. The other show that made me laugh is I didn't know that I was pregnant. Have you seen this show? Is that where everybody keeps on thinking, discovery? They, they keep thinking they're going to the washroom and they, and they yeah, they go, ah, oh, I just had, I thought it was a big fart. And it turned yeah, out it was a baby. baby. <laughs> uh, they they do like uh, depictions, so they'll do a reenactment of of people's <clears throat> stories. We'll get to I have a baby in my sweatpants in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, one where she was well. Here, listen. I didn't know I was pregnant. When Jasmine suddenly experienced extreme abdominal pain, she... Now, I just want to remind you that if to be pregnant and not know it, you, you, you can't physically be showing. So most of the women in yeah, these depictions are, are fairly large. Yeah. Thought it was menstrual cramps. <laughs> but when the pain became unbearable, she phoned her mom, who insisted she call an ambulance. At the hospital, doctors discovered a breech baby between her legs and... <laughs> Uh, I'd stop right there for a what? second. <laughs> she didn't discover the breached baby between her legs. The doctor did. The doctor did. <laughs> <laughs> My nether regions look like a kid. <laughs> Too dangly for you. Yeah. My nether regions look like a baby. <laughs> I don't remember sitting on a cold surface. <laughs> Smiling. That's front hemorrhoids. Jasmine didn't even know she was pregnant. It you gets better, though. It gets better. So she didn't know she was pregnant, mm -hmm. but listen to this. You are having a baby. I looked at her like she had four heads. I'm like, no, there's no way. I can't be pregnant. <laughs> I didn't understand how it could possibly be because I'd taken the morning after pill. <laughs> Oh, you should be fine then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't know how I could be pregnant because after I had the sex, I chucked myself down the stairs. There'd be no way. <laughs> this is a very serious situation. I said I need to do an emergency C-section right now because the baby is presenting feet first. Oh my God, it hurts. The blood. Imagine that, huh? You go to the doctor because your stomach hurts. And they go, whoa, you got feet coming out of there. You got some toes there. Some danglers. <laughs> and she's thinking, I don't know if anybody got all the way in, but... <laughs> <laughs> the did, I sure as heck remember him going out. Plot that goes to the baby can be compromised. And within minutes, you can have brain damage and then ultimately feel... Sort of like yeah, the mom. Yeah, yeah, the apple doesn't fall <laughs> far from the brain damage. So li tree. listen, yeah, listen, uh, it, it gets honest to God, it gets even better. So she's got the baby sticking out, right? And and they, get, they go, mm -hmm. okay, emergency. Because you got to save a little gaffer. Of course. Poor little fella or that. whatever it is. So you only have a few minutes to deliver the baby before major complication can happen. Yeah! <laughs> I screamed the whole way from the ER to the OR. I would too if I had feet hanging out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Entire mind was in complete shock. Oh I didn't know anything. And I didn't know if my child was alive. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh. Moments later, Jasmine's mother arrives. I'm looking for my daughter. One of the nurses told me, please go to the OR. She's having emergency surgery. And I said, for what? Surgery? And they said she's having a baby. I just couldn't believe it. It was quite a shock. I get, you get, you. Trust me, it gets better. Okay. 9, 10 in the morning, they told me I was having a baby, and by 9, 12, I was on the OR table being put under. Okay, she's ready. The moment the anesthesiologist told me that I could start, I started the incision, and within five minutes, I was right at the uterus. When I opened the uterus, I pretty much just grabbed the baby. She's, uh, you know, it's funny, within five minutes she's at the uterus, uh, I bet you a lot of guys have said that to the girl, too. <laughs> I was thinking was like, <laughs> <laughs> That ain't the first time. Very true, very true. Right the shoulder and just pull the baby out. Come on, baby. 
Yeah, I'm on. Oh. Hang on. It's a girl. It's a girl. It was a baby girl. And? And she was crying. Huh. I and? am the one who clamp and cut the umbilical cord. Ooh. Ooh. Soon, Dr. Hamill discovers the surprise birth has caused a major complication. We need to blood that leg quickly. What's going on? Is everything okay? They had told me that her leg had passed through the birth canal. It didn't appear that the blood flow was going to the limb. How's she doing? If doctors can't get the circulation back, they may have to amputate the baby's leg. Oh, oh that sucks, that. eh? It was like, wow. Yeah, you didn't know you, you, you were pregnant, and then it turns out it only gets the one leg. Oh, amputee. Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> Eileen. I was extremely concerned. Well, I'm attending to the baby. Check the capillary again. And then all of a sudden, I can hear my nurse practitioner. Oh my God. Oh my God, doctor. So I turned my head, and what I saw was an arm sticking out of the uterus. It's twins. In my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's the evil one. Now, I, I don't understand. <laughs> the bad scene. Hey, the arms standing out. You know, I, I can understand, and I don't, I, but I can I more feasibly understand uh, not knowing you're pregnant with one kid. Yeah. Two. So this is a, maybe a testament wow. to the size. Size of the female. <laughs> of, yeah. Was I she... didn't know I had I was pregnant, I, like... and I definitely didn't know I was pregnant with two of them. <laughs> it's like a waiting room in there. Yeah, must have. Been. Hopefully, they were from the same dude. <laughs> they might not have been. They might not have been. That's happened. That has happened. Yeah, yeah. Really? Saw it on Maury. Did you really? Yeah. I saw it on oh, Maury. One kid was 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 black, and the other kid was white. And born at the same twins. Born at the. They were twins. So what they, they were no. fraternal. I'm not even no, kidding I'm you. Sorry. It's on Maury. When, 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 when that's and the white father television was now. saying, "Those are both of my kids." Oh. And Maury's like, "Are are you serious?" <laughs> well, I remember the one where the where, where the, the two white the white couple had the black baby, and yes. the dad was like, "Yeah, that's mine." And they panned in on the kid for like two <laughs> minutes, going, "Are you sure?" He's like, "You got it. Look, it's got my eyes. <laughs> it's got eyes." <laughs> wow, eh? That so shortage of awesomeness on TV these days. <laughs> I didn't know I was pregnant with one. Nevertheless, two. <laughs> Nevertheless. And what not. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Dean Glendell Show. Head for the hills! Ah! 102.1 The Edge. Talking about crazy TV shows, and uh, the the one that made me laugh the hardest was uh, I didn't know I was pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> That and and you know to be fair, the I didn't know I was pregnant thing. Most of these women were real, real big, and I don't know if you have any massive friends, Atwa. <laughs> no, I don't know if you have any. If you know of anybody that was pregnant and had no clue, I knew a girl who was pregnant for a good five months, five to six months, and she, and she didn't know. That's that's the kind of good news though. Like, cause you she get to the no five month idea. period, was she pretty big? She no, she was like she's small. She was like she's probably like hundred. Did she have like she great breasts all of a sudden though? No, she didn't. She didn't show anything. They do say your first pregnancy, your body doesn't know you're pregnant, so it's not used to it. Nothing's been pushed out, so that can happen. That's true because the second one, it's all muscle. It's memory. yeah, it's all exactly, and you automatically start showing. So, yeah, she was like six months and had no clue. She was drinking. We were still going out. She had no clue. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Did the baby come out all funky because no, she, the was baby's all, good. she was boozing Spaced all the time? Eyes. Baby's like four now. He's he's good. He's good. <laughs> this um, this is this is, <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> this is the I didn't know I was pregnant baby in my sweatpants edition. My mom started asking me where I... Once again, enormous woman. Mm. <laughs> is she really? Mm. Her. Oh. What are, we, what are we talking here? Like... 180? Oh, that's not enormous. No, that's like not at all. 275. I didn't know I had an eating disorder. <laughs> she's three foot six. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I, I didn't know I had an eating disorder. <laughs> we all the rest of us did. Yeah. She pointed right toward her appendix wrap. Oh my god, I think it's a pants. We need to get her to the hospital. And uh, I put on some capri sweatpants, and I tried to put on a shirt, but I was just in too much pants. We're gonna get you to the hospital. It's gonna be all right. While Logan babysits Gabriel, Emily is raced to the ER. So we put her in the back seat. And Gay's driving as fast as she possibly could towards the hospital, which was about 15 miles. Please go. The whole ride there it was a nightmare. I was crying, screaming the whole way. 
Okay, we're here. Yeah. I'm pulling in. Yeah. They got out of the car, ran inside, and told a nurse that we needed someone out here. We need help. Somebody come quick. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I just started hurting. <laughs> so bad. And I just felt this burst. <laughs> like this sudden, like, gush. <laughs> Yeah, you're laughing at her pain, gush. Yeah. Burst like gush, like <laughs> biting. It's like every time I bite into a, a cream film. <laughs> Just a gush. And then I felt something like go down my leg. It just felt slimy and gross and like goo. <laughs> <laughs> little didgeridoo in the background there. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Slimy and gooey, and it was a baby. I thought that was my appendix to this burst until I kind of felt something move down next to my leg. I could hear like a little tiny noise. I just was in shock. And she looks at me. Her eyes are as big as saucers. I'll never forget the look on her face. That's not the only thing on her that's as big as a saucer. <laughs> this thing just fell out. <laughs> I think I just had a baby. One <laughs> 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 oh, of the greatest happen? lines ever. Yeah. What was she doing for nine months? You should see the look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just had a baby. And she just got the stun look on her face. What do you mean you just had a baby? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. There was no pushing. There was nothing. I just heard this tiny, itty bitty, mousy cry. <clears throat> and she pulled back the towel. <laughs> I looked down and there was a baby in my sweatpants. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, the greatest line ever. <laughs> I look down, there's a baby in my goddamn sweatpants. <laughs> right in them. <sighs> At least the baby was warm. Yeah. yeah. It's better being born into sweatpants and <laughs> some tight denim, I guess. That's eh? true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Dean Blundell Show. I have some bad things to say about those people. Freaking, I heard it. Flying through my freaking damn wall. The Dean Blundell Show. Boom, man. 102.1. Freaking, I knew it. The Edge. Time for well, Hop and Best Confession wins. We got some of them Edge Fest tickets to give away. <laughs> Oh, and Argo tickets. Okay, yeah, Argo <laughs> tickets too. Samantha. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm pretty good going to work, so eh. Where do you work? Better. I work a um, uh, telemarketing job while I'm in school, so. Oh, that sucks. Oh, I knew I yeah. recognized your voice. <laughs> is, it tel- or is it telemarketing or do you do phone sex? Is that what they call it now? <laughs> telemarketing? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, phone sex pays better. Oh, totally. They, they did a special on people that do phone sex, like phone sex operators. Mm. Yeah. I was, <laughs> you should, <laughs> if you call one of those lines, guys or girls, the person on the other end is not as hot as they say so they, they might, are. I'm just know? letting you know. <laughs> they might have an accidental baby at some point. Yeah, a few of accidental babies. <laughs> well, thanks for calling. What happened? Hey, what happened? What the f- Okay, so I was having, I had my uh, house to myself, my parents were away. Uh, my boyfriend out of town came, we were quite excited. Got the whipped cream, everything out. Uh, the nines were just in the kitchen, didn't think anything would happen. The nines, uh, what's the nines? Just, you know, like whipped cream, like I was trying to be romantic. Oh, the whole everything. nine yards. Oh, you know okay. what I mean, yeah. I thought you said so, cat um, and nine tails. I was going to say, you guys, <laughs> 1860 no, 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 no. is really go for it. Yeah. <laughs> no. So the anyways, act, yeah. I got a radial arm thaw, a hammer, three nails. <laughs> not that kinky, not that kinky. But um, anyways, I thought like no one was going to come home. My parents were away, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, all we hear is a door door open. And it's it's a, it's a maid. She comes once a week to clean my house. <laughs> Uh, we're just we're just on the table. It's just so awkward. This poor uh, poor woman that doesn't speak English is just mortified. Um, at that point, I didn't even know what to do. I just I kind of just went upstairs and pretended that it didn't happen. Um, but then I was so scared that she would tell my mother uh, that I uh, actually broke a bunch of things in the house. 
um, and blamed it on her, and my mom fired her. I feel so bad just because. Oh, <laughs> poor Consuela. <laughs> <laughs> why Consuela? Oh, why? Yeah, why yeah. Consuela? Why not Sally? Yeah. Yeah, it was honestly it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for this day. Like, she's probably listening to this and being like, ah. Uh, I doubt Consuela's listening to no. this. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> hang on. Wow. Jay. Hey, good morning, guys. What's up, brother? Uh, I got a quick story for you, Dean. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I worked at this company, Todd Pools, and uh, working at this company, I found out I was getting laid off, um, mainly because somebody was upset. But once I found out about this, I spoke with my supervisor. Um, he let me know. So when he wasn't there, I went into his lunch bag, grabbed his sandwich. Uh, it was a really hot day, and I used what I could to soak all the sweat off my lower region. Placed it back on his sandwich, and uh, the secret is he doesn't know about it, but I know he's listening. So, Andrew, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. Andrew, you stink palmed his sandwich. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Andrew, that breath is go, terrible. Go, go. <laughs> I don't want to, Dean, I don't want to tell you his last name because that would be rude, but if I were to tell you, it might be Andrew. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Good morning, Andrew. You like this guy. Oh, my God. All right. Hang on, dude. <laughs> That's a whole segment you could do on revenge. Oh. Wow. I hate stories like that yeah, about the too. food. And then yeah. what we do is if we let him win, if he actually wins this contest, we'll get a cavalcade of hate, hate, hate mail. Yeah. Stop doing that. It's just going to encourage people to do stuff to my food. <laughs> Justin. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, dude? Not too much. I got a What happened? Hey, what happened? Hey, what happened? What the f- happened? Do it. <laughs> so, I've been playing a festival up in uh, Mattawa. You guys probably know what it's called Voyager Days. I was about 17. And uh, the group of people I was with, uh, we all went to a bar. I got in and, and we were drinking a fair bit there in the afternoon, and there's people everywhere. And I ended up getting pretty drunk, so I had to get some cash out from the ATM. So, I walked to the ATM down the street. And there was a lineup of about 50, 60 people. By the time I actually made it to the ATM and was getting my cash out, I couldn't hold it. Totally just pissed my pants at the ATM. Like, I mean, like, probably, you know, a good three or four beers. I had to turn around, do a shame walk past about 60 people in line who all knew what it was. Then I had to walk past uh, about 1,000 people in the street to get back to the bar that we were at. And when I got back to the bar, I lied to all my friends and, and made this huge story that some old man bumped into me and spilled his beer all over me. So my girlfriend at the time, she stuck her face right in my crotch and like totally smelled my... my So boring. I remember once being stuck on a boat with my grandparents when I was 12. (laughs) That was worse. <laughs> hey, Rick. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. What's up? Well, I've uh, got what something happened? What happened? But, yeah. Hey, what happened? Hey, what happened? <laughs> well, I was up school doing just outside of North Bay there with my buddies. We were doing the rap around Algonquin, and uh, I had to have a whiz. I just wasn't going to make it. And unfortunately, I got my man stuck in my zipper. And I couldn't get it out, so I had to unfortunately wrap a pellet clover around it and ride my snowmobile to North Bay to the hospital to get it uh, pulled off. They cut and my wiener. I was very, very close to frostbite, but they uh, cut my wiener. I, I made it. So hold it. You, 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 you zipped your entire like what the tip, the, 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 the whole. Uh, the sh- oh, how do you go? Past- but bud, how do you get past the? Sh- how do you get like all the way around, or just the bottom of the little just bit of the, the bottom, bottom of the? Sh- right okay, just the, above the your. Back in your shaft. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Wow. So you, yeah. you get on your snowmobile, drive three hours, almost get frostbite on your doohickey. Yeah. I'm and how did they sure. get it undone? You don't even want to know. Hell, I'll tell you what. It was practically frozen when I got there, so all I did was just had to put another one in and then zip out the team. Oh, yeah. Golly, man. Oh, you I got right my here. wiener. All right. Hang on. That is on, I, you know, that's I like a nightmare. That's- I wear the pens if I'm doing the big long snowmobile ride. <laughs> just piss yourself. Yeah, yeah. Not Let a it bad go. idea. Hey, Tina. Hi. How are you? Good. How what you happened? Hey, what happened? Um, okay, so we were up in Wasega for a girls' weekend, as you do, 
And uh, we were out in one of the bars. I had a few too many drinks, met a very handsome man um, who invited us all back to their cottage or whatever. Um, you know, we got right into it, fooled around, whatever, fell asleep, passed out, obviously. Um, and then I knew that I had passed out naked, but I don't know how I woke up with sort of covers all over me. He was gone in the morning, disappeared. And uh, someone came over to me and said, listen, I'm really sorry, but that's my brother. Um, he kind of does this stuff all the time. But don't worry, I covered you up when you were when you were nude. Um, needless to say, we are together now. We have been for about a year. Oh. Um, and I'm not allowed at any of the family events. Why is that? Well, we just try and avoid it. I mean, it's not that I'm not allowed. It's that I've seen both of them naked. I've seen both of their, their all their stuff. Mm. And we don't like to talk about it. All right. Hang on yeah. a second. Mm. Yeah. I guess seen them both of them naked. Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> uh, Jay, I hate to say it, but you win, dude. Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Don't make a habit of doing no. that. Because your buddy Andrew that works at the pool company that you rubbed his Wonder Bread all over your Bilbo <laughs> I Baggins. Again, I promise, but it was well worth it. All right. <laughs> Sometimes the low road's pretty fun. <laughs> this, this is Gordon's Hood on 102.1 The Edge. This is your Edge Hold it. Files <laughs> with Dean Blundell on the Edge. Middle-aged woman found naked outside her apartment with her head stuck in a staircase handrail told police she was having sex with her boyfriend in public in order to spice things up. That'll do it. Yeah, I'd yeah. say. That's spicy. Very. <laughs> Authorities were alerted to the situation by a concerned neighbor who determined the woman was unable to free herself when emergency workers arrived at the apartment complex in the western Russian city of Lepesk. Last Wednesday night, they were shocked to discover the uh, birthday-suited 46-year-old woman on all fours with her head wedged firmly between two bars on the building's stairway railing. Huh. Speaking of her railing. Bo- <laughs> this is, you know what? This is her boyfriend. He was nowhere to be found. Really? Mm. It's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> In all my time working as a rescuer, I don't recall an incident like this. The emergency services dude, they noted alcohol may have played a role in the outcome of the woman. Also had a small nail sticking in her head. Oh. oh. Yeah. They broke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He That's just left. That. He bailed. He's like, I gotta go. That was the straw that broke the camel's yeah. back in that yeah. relationship. Eh? Not soulmate material, no. You don't, you don't treat me very well. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, when we were having sex and I got my head stuck in the railing, you left. <laughs> baby. For five hours. <laughs> baby had to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put food on the table for you. And Speaking yes, your f- head does swell up when it gets between two parts. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, especially the... Uh, forget yeah, it. I know. Um... <laughs> Speaking of um, food on the table, a Subway sandwich artist admitted today to putting his penis on the store's sandwich bread and posting the photo on Instagram. You stupid idiot. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, you're going to put your wiener on people's bread. Don't post the pictures. You can put it on MySpace if you want to. Yeah, MySpace is okay. No one one will see it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Or a bombshell comes after Huffington Post News received several photos of two men in Columbus, Ohio. Who worked for the restaurant chain, their Twitter and Instagram pages soon flooded with festoons of their exploits. In several photos, <laughs> Subway's signature bread is being shaped into wieners. <laughs> one man, I know it's funny, <laughs> I think it's hilarious. One one of the men, Cameron Boggs, admitted on Instagram, Today at work, I froze my pee in a water bottle. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's great. Later posted and deleted it, the most incriminating photo, which depicts a man rubbing his penis on a foot-long bread. And don't know, it didn't go the whole way. It was no. just, you know, he just, oh, oh, he just oh. dabbed it. He oh, just I just dabbed okay. it on the bread. <laughs> it took a couple Slow of rubs. Yeah. <laughs> um, Light rubs. Anyway, um, it was on foot-long bread, posted on Instagram under the username Weed Priest, with the caption uh-huh. that read, My name is at Ian Jet, and I will be your sandwich artist today. <laughs> Uh, he did He did admit to authorities that, yeah, he did that, but he did it at home. But if you look at the subway tray, there's no way that's <laughs> yeah. at home. It was a takeaway tray. Yeah, well, was it ever? Oh. Take it away and burn it. <laughs> and um, one of my favorite stories of the year, meet Nick Gilronan, 27-year-old UPS store worker who won Brooklyn's smallest penis award. 
Said he's very <laughs> proud of his little thing. <laughs> is he? Saying, quote, the size of a man's penis does not matter for who he is or a person in a relationship. That's actually not true at all. Not true. He won at the Kings County Bar, the smallest penis contest. This is his sixth <laughs> annual. He said he put on a good show for the audience and he was successful. The crowd of about 100 people watched the New York City native match wiener size with other contestants, including a 55 year old from Minnesota called himself Rip Van Dinkle. <laughs> 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 Rip Competition Van included swimwear round of the skimpy mesh mankinis and QA. Gil Ronan was uh, proclaimed the champ and he received uh, <laughs> uh, just yeah, yeah. 200 bucks. That's it. It's so yeah. little. Well, yeah. such a little amount. Yeah, a little amount he, for a little boy. As he uh, pranced around to Elton John's tiny dancer, saying, "I hope, <laughs> I hope this will look brave to guys who had self-esteem issues and make them feel better about themselves." I imagine his wiener size would make everybody feel better about themselves. <laughs> it was under one inch, point really? eight five inches. Yeah, it's about that big. Can he even pee out of that? Yes, of course. <laughs> no. Even pee out of that. It just comes Are out like a mist. Like, just well, a mist. yeah, you got to shave it, right? Yeah, you got- <laughs> and he's a big guy, too, oh. so he's a small wiener, and he's fat. So, like, it's oh, pushed Nothing boy. going Nothing. For him. No. Nothing. One of the promoters dubbed the contest as a pageant for competent people with a sense of humor. Uh, one of the ladies commented, who was the judge, saying, quote, She's never seen anything so weird in her whole life. <laughs> a pimple. It was like a belly button. Yeah. Not even Are kidding. Are sure he wasn't a woman? No, yeah, we're sure. I'm looking at a picture of him. How tall do you figure yeah, he is? Yeah, how tall is he? He's 6'4". Uh, Get him! Yeah. He so is really right now in a matter. sash. No. It really doesn't matter. Oh, it matters. No, no it I doesn't mean, matter like, how, tall matter. Matter. No, you how tall you are. Yeah. No, I said that yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Does the shoe size really matter? No, he must have size one feet. <laughs> <laughs> he had little teeny stubby <laughs> fingers. He's still in Oshkosh Bagosh <laughs> shoes. <laughs> They light up when he walks around. <laughs> Geox. 837, those are your edge files, whatever the hell day it is in uh, July of the year 2013. The Edge Files on 102.1. The Edge. This is the Dean Blundell Show on 102.1. Edge. The excitement continues to build in London, England, as we are waiting to see what this little baby looks like that uh, Kate and William had yesterday. Man, what what an exciting day. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's not even... Birth isn't even exciting when it's yours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're just waiting. Yeah. yeah. Like, birth isn't even fun when it's... And, and like, every... The world waited yesterday. And I was, wa- I was just watching it on TV. Uh, there are, like, thousands, tens of thousands of people outside the hospital waiting for these people to come out, get in a car, and go home. Yep. They want a glimpse. It's the biggest good news story in the world. But I don't understand it. I don't understand. Like, yes, third in line to the throne, and that throne means absolutely dick squat anymore. Like, it's not like it comes with any kind of power. Like, Get you to could, be on a coin. Like, oh, I'm going yeah, yeah. to invade a country. You can't even do that. Yeah. No. Stink of democracy, eh? More bored than us, though, well, were, were people that actually live in England, I, I guess, other than, lo- you know, local newspapers and stuff, having some fun with it. But, uh, you know, generally the people in England just think this is just the stupidest, most boring thing in the world. Most of the people that are camped out are from other countries. Like, that's that's how important the monarchy, I guess, is to everybody else. And we as Canadians, who have this lady on all our money, yeah, um, are just... Thrilled, like Hello Magazine, which does all the uh, does all the royal stuff. Yes, it, it'll be forty five uh, a- episodes of just Baby and Kate and William. That's it. Nothing else. And and, and it's just it's a kid. It's a baby. It's like everything yeah. else. I know. She's not. I hope it's. An, I hope it's an ugly baby. Yeah, me too. It will be way more fun. An ugly baby. <laughs> yeah. Just like. Gah! You're gross. <laughs> You're gross. You're gross. And you know, no one. If it is an ugly baby, too, no one's gonna say, Nobody. "Oh, yeah." Because there are ugly babies. <laughs> so special. There There's ugly very baby. like have you. I've yeah. had friends that have had kids that are mm. just ugly, mm. and you go, "That is." Look at the baby. I it's just so good. Lady. No, that is an ugly child. You have a ugly baby. your kid got hit with something on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the parents who always want to take a lot of pictures yeah. of the ugly baby. Yeah. yeah. Post the ugly baby everywhere. Yeah, the ultrasound was way yeah. better. <laughs> 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 Too bad it didn't come out looking like the yeah, ultrasound. Yeah, like a little bubble. <laughs> yeah. 
Whoa, that's an ugly <laughs> baby. <laughs> So uh, there were thousands, tens of thousands of reporters camped out there, I guess. And uh, this is a reporter from the BBC. So the BBC <laughs> thinks this is just a huge joke. They just can't say. And, and they, they were they were told this is all you and they can't report on any other real news, like yeah. any any hard hitting things. Thank God nothing major yeah. happened around the world. <laughs> I know. Like that. There's a plane in uh, at LaGuardia yesterday skidded on its nose to a to a halt. Ten people injured. No one died. No one died. That's big news. That's exactly. great news. Waiting for a woman to birth is not fun. That's not great news. Happens every day. Listen to how much the BBC reporter couldn't stand it. <laughs> yeah, do let me know if you hear anything. Uh, Jane, thank you very much. Jane Hill at Buckingham Palace. Not everybody is enjoying the specter of the speculation, the endless speculation. A couple of texts coming in to the BBC. Uh, come on, BBC. People do have babies. Stop saying the same thing over and over. Give us the rest of the news. Uh, what a load of sycophantic rubbish, says another. Good morning. And uh, God help us if this ends up a long labor. That, that's a view that I have heard expressed here by a couple of people. So, you know, we'll just wait and see. Uh, it could be tomorrow morning, if all goes well today, and uh, there are no complications, that we see the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and their new boy or girl, third line throne, walking out of that door behind me here at the Lindo Wing. But until then, we're going to be speculating about this royal birth with no facts to hand at the moment. <laughs> Back to you, Ben. Back to you, Ben. <laughs> yeah, with no facts whatsoever, this sucks. This is another one, a shorter one that he did, a uh, report that he filed where he's basically saying, this sucks, I can't stand that. Thank you, Robert. Uh, well, plenty more to come from here, of course. None of it news, uh, because that'll come from Buckingham Palace. But that won't stop us. We'll see you later. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> just get me off the air. Do <laughs> you want to hear an exciting birth, though? Do I? It's coming up next. Mm. As promised. Oh, yes. Baby in the sweatpants. And <laughs> that's the baby at birth I'm waiting for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So See, that that's should have happened to Kate. Yeah, that's news. <laughs> <laughs> it appears she squirted it out into her sweatpants. <laughs> We believe they were Juicy Couture. <laughs> You're listening to the Dean Bundell Show. Quick email. Hey, guys. Uh, you don't happen to have the audio of the uh, chick giving birth in her pants, do you? <laughs> we do. I gotta say, I, I don't. There's so much. I know I've tried to ask you about it because I don't have the lady parts. Yes. But when you, d like, I've watched... Birth on the, the, these these TV channels. Yeah, I've seen C sections personally. Three yes. of them. It looks like it really hurts. Uh, yeah. I would assume so. I've never had a child, but yes. Haven't you? No. No, but she's been with a British guy. Oh well. <laughs> close. It's like having a child. It's very yeah. close to having a child. Beside you. Um. <laughs> anyway, my 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 point is is that um, there is no physical way. That thing can like the only <laughs> the only explanation I have for not knowing you're pregnant is that you're probably dumb and maybe maybe a bit bigger <laughs> for giving birth and not knowing that you did. The only explanation I have is that woman has very been very busy. Very, very yeah, busy. Yeah, that was my thought too. Very is, busy. is that is that a fair assessment? It's accurate up to a point, like up to about seven months. If you've never had a kid. You may not know you had a kid because you can still. Yeah, what you was your friend? Flow. Five months? She was five. She was five. Five going on six, and she got right liquored up. Right liquored. Because we knew the Duchess of uh, Cambridge. Cambridge. Yeah. Kate was pregnant. She knew she was pregnant. She did. Took her like hours and hours to give birth. Yes. Did she have a C section? Do we know for no, a fact? I'm pretty no, sure it, I was think it was natural. I think it was natural. Well, well, we'll see what the baby's head looks like, and we'll know for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's if it's really narrow, uh, yeah, it's know, like a you know head. Prince William's a lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> looks like a candle. <laughs> oh, that guy's lucky. <laughs> it's like Bert. But it, you know, and congratulations to them, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but but this is a much much less pageantry involved in this one. This is from the TLC show. <laughs> uh, you may have heard it earlier, and it's just amazing audio. It's about a minute and a half. I didn't know I was pregnant, and uh, this girl gave birth in her sweats. 
in her sweats. <laughs> My mom started asking me where I heard. Right she pointed right toward her appendix wrap. Oh my god, I think it's a pain. We need to get her to the hospital. And uh, I put on some capri sweatpants and I tried to put on a shirt, but it, I was just in too much pants. We're gonna get you to the hospital. It's gonna be alright. While Logan babysits Gabriel, Emily is raced to the ER. So we put her in the back seat and Gay's driving as fast as she possibly could towards the hospital, which was about 15 miles. Please go fast. The whole ride there, it was a nightmare. I was crying, screaming. The whole way. Okay, we're here. I'm pulling in. Gay got out of the car, ran inside, and told a nurse that we needed someone out here. We need help. Somebody come quick. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I just started hurting. <laughs> so bad. And I just felt this burst. <laughs> like this sudden, like, gush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not in the car. <laughs> yeah, I just cleaned that thing. Oh, I just had it chamied. <laughs> it was just and a then water break. I felt something like go down my leg. <laughs> it just felt slimy and gross and like goo. I thought that was my appendix to this burst until I kind of felt something move down next to my leg. I could hear like a little tiny noise. I just was in shock. And she looks at me. Her eyes are as big as saucers. I'll never forget the look on her face. Yeah, once again, I, and I, I may have said this earlier, yeah. not the only thing as big as a saucer, because <laughs> that thing just fell right out. <laughs> uh, I think I just had a baby. <laughs> She's got the stomach on. Who says, I think I just had a baby? I think I just had a baby. <laughs> or it's a big stone. I am almost, I am pretty sure there's a baby in my pants. Yeah, that slimy thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There was no pushing. There was nothing. Mm. I just heard this tiny, itty bitty, mousy cry. You know, uh, if her future husband is watching this video mm -hmm. and he hears the these words, here, hang on. If he hears these words, you know he's running. I just heard this tiny, itty bitty, mousy cry. No, this one, I think. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Right there here. was no pushing. There was nothing. I just heard this <laughs> <laughs> tiny bitty bitty mousy cry. Yeah. And she pulled back the towel. I looked down and there was a baby in my sweatpants. <laughs> greatest, greatest line of any reality TV show ever. <laughs> I looked down and there was a baby in my sweatpants. Of course there was. <laughs> That's what I'm going to start telling the chicks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dean Blundell show. It's going to scar me for life and it's going to haunt me forever. Even at an old age. 102.1. I don't know how you put up with it. The Edge. So the royal baby was born. Yeah. Yeah. Prince Adolf. By the way. Prince Adolf? It's not Prince Adolf. No. They don't know the name yet. No, but, but Ricky Gervais <laughs> yeah. did say that it would be <laughs> cool idea. if they named it that because all the because they bet on the names. Like Henry is great is is yeah. one of the names they're betting on. James, Alexander, Andrew. I mean, there there there's a bunch of different names. But Ricky Gervais tweeted yesterday if they uh, if they if they named it Adolf, man, that would really screw with all the odds makers. <laughs> <laughs> or Osama. Can you imagine? Somehow you've crossed the line. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> Might have crossed that line. What, Osama? Yeah. Yeah. I think Genghis. Genghis? Genghis. <laughs> By the edge. Hello? Hi. Hey, Dean. Good morning, guys. Derek, what's up? I just have a story that was related to the guy who won What's Wrong With you. Oh, well, hopping. Yeah, he peed in his yeah, boss's. Well, or no, he stink palmed his boss's sandwich. He grabbed the sandwich and really hot day and uh, he got fired. And so he took the sandwich and rubbed it on some parts he shouldn't have and then watched <laughs> the guy eat it. <laughs> yeah. So I was working three years ago with this construction guy and we were doing interlocking for another guy. And he told me he was going to pay me. The second guy was going to pay me. And he tried chipping me a few bucks on my pay. And I went and got him some Starbucks and ended up pissing in his cup. Oh, oh why no. do people do yeah, that? That's, that's too extreme. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. think so. 
You know, <laughs> you know, you can go to jail for like uh, a couple of years for for defiling someone's food with your body fluids. You can, if they find out that you did that, you can go to. It's like criminal mischief. It's yeah. like it's big time. Yeah, it's not like you, you slap the guy in the face because it could it could lead he to could die. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's manslaughter. Hey Scott. Morning, sir. What's up? I just actually, Dean, I just wanted to call in to say good morning to you and to Derek and tell you that I work for a catering company here in the falls that does the Department of Defense from Toronto to Casablanca Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And every single morning you've been on for the last five years, and this is actually the first time I've got in. And <clears throat> you, you guys are by far the best, and we can't wait just to hear it at 6 a.m. to get fired up. Oh, thanks, dude. Wow. I really appreciate nice. it. Very nice. nice. So, so it's, no, go ahead and continue to uh, give us compliments. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt your compliment. <laughs> no, uh, we always have the Department of Defense boys lined up for breakfast, and we're serving them, and you're playing in the background, and, and it's from Toronto to Casablanca Boulevard five days a week. We're, we're ready for the fluff session. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> I appreciate it, dude. Is it, you, you don't mess, you cater for a living. You don't mess with people's food, specifically if they're soldiers, right? You know what? Oh, for starters, all those boys, I'm, I'm humbled when I get there, sir. I'm, yes. I'm humbled just to yeah. get there. I'm just serving them breakfast, and, you know, they're taking care of us at night and whatnot. And mm -hmm. uh, so, no, I'm humbled and absolutely, positively not. Good. Because uh, we've could, had a rash of that today. People stink I, 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 sandwiches I, I, and whizzing and coffee, and it's just not cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. In the end, you've got to be able to, uh, you got to be able to do something better, sir. There, <laughs> there's there, there's got to be something better. But, no, when you're taking care of those boys... Absolutely not. Yeah. If, uh, if you don't mind, sir, i just give a quick shout-out to Dean, Corey, Christine, my boy Evan, Matt, and uh, Colton, and Seth, and Owen. And you guys are the best. We love you. Any, any more? Wow. Wow. <laughs> the piano music's just started up there, so you well, got to speed I, it up. I, you you I might want to go get the class list and go through it. <laughs> I realize the boys are up front, so I better get them all in. No, no worries, dude. Appreciate Thank your you call much. and your kindness. Thank you. You can hear the discipline there, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's what army guys do. Yeah, they get up, they 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 do stuff. <laughs> yeah, they do stuff, and then da, 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 da. then they go to bed, and then they get up and do it again. It would be the I have friends that are in the army, and I got you respect those people in uniform like crazy. But, yeah. but you know, the, the having a guy scream at you, the first thing that happens when you wake up yeah. is not my idea of a great time. No, Good no. morning, maggot. No. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a good sleep, Maggot? <laughs> yes, I did. I don't care, <laughs> Drop and give me 20. Yeah, that's what you'd like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I was an air cadet, so. <laughs> Is space, that real? You say it's space real. cadet or air, air cadet? cadets? <laughs> air cadets. I was. Those are the, I, I hate to say this, but those are the kids that stand in front of the liquor store asking for change. Yes. Wearing the blue uniforms, yeah. Where does that money go? It goes to the Air Cadets Association. Which does what for you? What do uh, they do? They get you free hats? Place your equipment. What kind of equipment? Uniforms. What do you do for Air Cadets? You just uh, march around? No, you, you Pretend march you're a soldier? Yes, you march around. You are in the band. You can be in the band. Oh. Yeah. You what go band? up to Camp There's Borden. a band? There's a band. There's a band. Oh, you go up to Borden? And, you yeah, know, go, yeah, I, I hate to say this again, <laughs> but everybody that I've seen uh, in an Air Cadet it's almost like, unfortunately, they just found absolutely nowhere else to fit in. Even the Boy Scouts Therefore, didn't want them. Yeah, the, there's like they they lost at Boy Scouts. <laughs> they couldn't do knots. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're gonna kick you out of beers. <laughs> the only thing left for you is air cadets. Oh, I was in it for like two months and it was done. And then did you go, man? I'm I, like, did, did you I look doing? around? They, <laughs> they did you look, is that why you left? Did you actually look around at the people you were doing it I with? Did, I did. I was like, these people who are a year older than me are yelling at me about shining my boots. Not about this. Just yeah, and you willingly went there when you were 14? I thought they tricked me and they said <laughs> you play sports all the time. And because I used to love to play sports when I was a kid. So that's how they lured us. Could you run? Yeah, I was a fast runner. Triple jumper. Even with those things? Even with those oh, things. Ha. And I was an early developer. Wow. Had these things. Let's okay. See, that's okay. why they wanted Young. you. Nine? Nine or ten. Uh, little air cadet eye candy. Yeah, look at this. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they had to get a hot chick in there. <laughs> For the brochures. Well, let's trick her. <laughs> we need more hot chicks in here. Let's trick her. Tell her they're sports. <laughs> I left when they made me starch my uniform. I wasn't about it. Oh, see, this is it. They, yeah. uh, they, no one shoes. wants to be told what to do by anybody other than no. their parents when they're 14. Yeah, no. Air cadets. Yeah. 
Hmm. You did fly in a glider, though, so it was entertaining. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you know. well, they had to. Hey, hey, Kevin. Hey. Oh. How are you? Good. How are you, Dean? Good. What's up? Excellent. Oh, I need to be blessed. I'm in Keswick all day. Dang it. <laughs> Bless you. Yes, I was at uh, Barry New Music Festival on Saturday. Bless me again. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, USS gave 102 the props over like uh, after they propped Rock 95. It was their festival, and they gave props to you guys too. Oh, did they? Yeah, I they're nice guys. Cool. I don't know if they got in trouble for that or not, but uh, no. I figure you guys are all part of the same company anyway. So. No, I don't think no, so. No, no, not at all, actually. No. They're, no. they're not a chorus station? No. No, they're not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but they're great guys, and they always say nice stuff about us, and that's why we say nice stuff. And they're a great band, too. I mean, they're they're wacky and weird, but they're, like, they have blenders on stage with them for no <laughs> reason. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Good, what's up? Nothing much, man. So I've been on Twitter, and I found out that Drake has this newfound friend. His name is Riff Ruff. Jody High Roller. This guy is hilarious. I swear he ate paint chips as a kid. Riff Raff Jody High Roller is Drake's friend on Twitter? Yeah. It's not surprising. I, I swear this guy ate paint chips when he was a kid. Like, there's something seriously wrong with this guy. And he's just all about Canada. Even though he's from the States, he loves Canada. And I think you guys would have a heck of a time with this guy. You know what I just found out today on the way to work? Yeah. That Drake yeah. follows me. That's awesome. Oh, hey, slow down. Yeah. Hey, you you got it. You, you huh? think about it. If Drake is following you, then that means you're more important than he is. Why? Because I don't follow him? Because he took the, the effort took the to made yeah. the effort to follow you. Well, I, I exactly. think that's because he's heard me say really awesome things about he's just him. That's waiting. why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dean, you're in the same league as Riff Raff now. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, I saw it this morning. I thought, come on. Really? Yeah. Does that mean you can? Because do you follow him just out of curiosity? No, oh, no, okay. no, no, no. So you guys can't direct Dude, message had, each other. Then no. no DMs, eh? No, not no. yet. You could. No. You don't want a little DM from Drake? No. Drinky? Have no. you read his tweets? <laughs> Drizzy. Yeah. Started from the bottom. No, he didn't. He started on the bottom. <laughs> made his way. Now he's here. <laughs> now he's here, fellas. <laughs> Dean Blundell Show, 102.1 The Edge.